All right, in this video, we're going to talk about something called information architecture. The acronym was IA, um, but essentially it's this idea of how do we begin to craft the navigation for our site and begin to structure the content for our site. And so there's a number of different research methods we can use to help us in crafting uh, that main navigation of our site and even the sub navigation of our site. Uh, for our sites that we're going to be building in class, um, they're, they're rather simple. And so a lot of research doesn't need to go into it. But nonetheless, if you have if you're dealing with a bigger site with a lot of content, uh, it's best to bring in end users to help you uh, begin to craft the content and the overall structure of your site. So here's a video that's going to introduce us to um, uh, IA and more specifically uh, site navigation. So go ahead and pause this video and watch this video from uh, the group called the Nelson Neiman Group, which is a huge uh, UX research uh, consultant company. So watch this video and it will continue on here. So in that video, it really discussed, you know, how many items should we have in our navigation? Uh, it really depends on the content. Uh, it depends on the context and also who is the user of your site. And so that's what this, this slide is getting into, right? Uh, the user is, you know, who is using your site? Uh, why, they, why would they even come to your site? Uh, what behaviors are they seeking? Um, and what do they need from your site? The content is going to be uh, what is the structure of the content? What type of content are you presenting? Is it going to be uh, content where it's just simply for a blog or is it content for uh, like Wikipedia where it just gives out a lot of data or information about a particular topic or a subject? And so it's kind of answering the content is the what. The users is the who, right? And the, the context is what is the business model? Um, what is the what is the business model in terms of is it a e-commerce website? Is it a blogging site? Uh, is it a new site? Um, and so what context are we are we trying to fit within um, and what are we trying to um, push across? And so why do our why, why does our site exist and to what extent? And so typically IA involves these three things, a, a, a more in-depth look at the users, the content itself, as well as the context that it's trying to uh, trying to fit within. So uh, some right, the users may be considered like who the content is the what. And the context is why, if you're trying to address information architecture. Here are some things we need to be considerate of when we're crafting our navigation. Give the users what they want when they first come to your site. Uh, what do the users want when they came, right? Try to put that information at the forefront. Uh, anticipate the actions of the user. And so um, I always show this site here. You may be familiar with it. I may not actually let's use a different web page I'm going to use. Uh, Firefox for this. All right, so I just opened up Netflix here, um, and let's just use this as a quick example to kind of go through some of uh, some of what you see here on this page here. So uh, let me just do a side by side. So give me one second. Let's put that over here, and let's put Netflix on the other side here. And I like to use this website because uh, Netflix has a, a huge UX team um, that works on different aspects of their application, whether it's the web page, the mobile app. Um, but um, a lot of companies benchmark against uh, Netflix. But anyway, when you're thinking about some of these questions here, um, like I said, it's probably not the best example here, but uh, you want to anticipate the plan, uh, anticipate and plan for the user's actions. And so here you'll see in their website, <clears throat> if somebody came to Netflix and they were going to set up for an account, Right, Netflix. There's two, really two different options you only have here. One is to put in your email address and do a 30, 30 day free trial, or you can sign in. And so it's not a lot of language here, not a lot of content, but really it's driving home the point of why you even came to the website. And so what 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 do users want when they come to your site? In this case here, if they came to Netflix, I don't have to sell them at this point, right? They may have heard via word of mouth or whatever it may be. In this case, here, I could just go ahead and get them into the to the platform um, not too much to the navigation in this case here they don't even have a navigation uh, to their site but really they're focusing prim primarily on this anticipating uh, what they want the user to do on their site or what they hope the user would do on their site um, <clears throat> there's some other things like if we looked at some other sites we can look at some of the other design uh, factors such as um, you know making sure that you provide direct links uh, to certain content in your web page so if you scroll down, um, 
there's some other links here, like such as to frequently asked questions. Uh, that's something that people may have a question about when they're actually coming to the site uh, or signing up for Netflix. And so that information here is here on the home page, right? They don't have to click to a different page, but they can ask, get some of their questions answered just by scrolling down a little bit here. Uh, another thing you want to be considerate of, don't make your navigation too heavy or too have me too many layers. Uh, back a long time ago, a lot of school websites would always fall into this area where they have a bunch of navigation, a bunch of um, uh, different layers of navigation. You have to basically hover over uh, this link to get to another link and, and basically go down this rabbit trail to find something. Uh, but some people say the rule of thumb is um, two to three clicks uh, to get to the information. Um, and I would say there's not really a rule, but try not to have it make it hard for your end user to find the content that they're looking for on your website or try not to have too many layers of navigation. These are three questions that I'll grade your final project on is where am I? Where can I go? How did I get there? And how do I, where do I get back? To, how do I get back to where I started? And so with this content here, um, a lot of times you can address this here in terms of where am I is by having a title page. Oh, I'm sorry, having the H1 and having the name of the page. That way the end user knows that what page they're on. Uh, where can I go? Having a consistent navigation on your site. So in your header of your website, you may want to keep the same three links or five links on every page. How did I get there? Uh, a lot of other sites with a lot of content management systems will have like breadcrumbs, but this can also be addressed by um, kind of just having uh, one of the pages that you're currently on highlighted different from the other pages. Like I said, for our projects, um, this is not necessarily a big concern, but for bigger websites, they have something called breadcrumbs. Uh, how do I get back to where I started? A lot of people do this by hyperlinking the logo. Um, <clears throat> the end user should never use the the tabs or the browser um, functionality to, to navigate your website. You should always make amends for that in your own web page or website. And so uh, one way uh, developers do that is they hyperlink the logo of the site or they'll have a home button or a home link where the end user can navigate back to where they've started. Here's a car sorting activity. Uh, we'll take a look at doing some of this uh, during our synchronous session. Um, but basically, uh, car sorting is a research method that we can use uh, to help us discover our navigation based on uh, the end user's perspective. And so we'll take a look at this car sorting activity in class uh, come um, uh, this upcoming week. Um, but here's a good video that talks about car sorting. So go ahead and pause this video and uh, watch this. I, mean, I think this video is about three minutes long here or so. So watch this video on car sorting and it's going to walk you through one of the, those research methods that we talked about earlier in the previous video in terms of how we may come up with our, our main navigation of our site. All right. So once you've watched that video, uh, this is going to be an activity that we'll, we'll also walk through uh, during our synchronous session is how to craft a, um, a site map. There's typically three things that you will typically find in a good site map. One, you're going to find the key or legend. Uh, which is what you see here when my mouse is hovering. This basically kind of gives a description to all the different shapes you're using in your, um, within your sitemap. You're going to see this orange persistent global navigation. You see this orange bar. Uh, what is that's really signifying or basically notating what's your main navigation of your site. And again, this is not a wireframe, but this is a sitemap in terms of how the hierarchical structure of your content of your site. So you'll see one, the Keo legend, two, the persistent global navigation, three, you're going to find this kind of this hierarchical structure or this stemming, what, what stems from the global navigation or the persistent global navigation. And the last thing you'll see is typically what's going to remain static from page to page. And you'll see the footer, uh, this is going to remain static from page to page. And some people like to put header information here as well of what's going to remain static as, uh, within the uh, page to, from page to page. So we'll get some practice with this um, during our synchronous session in terms of how to craft this. You'll see that this is going to be one of the things I'll ask you to do or uh, take us uh, to have to have completed for your, one of the requirements of your assignments. Um, and here's a site map. Um, so if you can uh, take a step at this activity um, in terms of basically recreating Gatorade's site map or Great, uh, create an excitement for Gatorade, the Gatorade website, and use this as your guide, uh, this example. Um, do your best uh, to do this. Uh, there is a tool that I would like for you to use. It's called draw.io. 
And when you go to Dry Dye, it's a free, it's a browser based tool. Um, you can say save to device, you can create a new diagram. And how this tool works here is that uh, you can go down and I think there is a, a option for uh, for sitemaps. But in this case here, that's going to use the basic. I have basic diagram and hit create. We're going to save that here. We'll say um, sitemap. We'll press save. And that's going to give us uh, give us an interface that looks like this here. So I'll make this a little bit bigger. And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to drag and drop uh, different items here. So if this is going to be my persistent global navigation, I would drag and drop this box element. I can change the different attributes here. So if that's going to be that, I can drag some text here. <clears throat> Oops. And say this is going to be my persistent global navigation. And if I wanted to, I can also add other boxes here. Again, uh, you want to make sure that you have a legend or a t or some type of key uh, that you can uh, use to identify these particular boxes elements. And so, if this is going to be I can use this box element here to serve as my particular legend. And again, the legend is going to just kind of notate what the shapes are. So I want to make sure I give a descriptive, I give some understanding of what these shapes are. So I'll just copy this one here. I can right click and duplicate. And I say this is one of the main pages. And I want to make sure I basically give a description for each of the different uh, shapes I'm using within my sitemap. Again, this may take this may this, this is a small learning curve here, um, but nonetheless, play around with this tool here. Try to recreate uh, Gatorade's website, and so there should be a link to it already. If you just go to Gatorade.com, and the UI has definitely changed since this this graphic here. But nonetheless, um, do your best to try to replicate some of the things you see here. Sounds good. All right, so I'm going to pause this video, uh, take a stab at this sitemap, and accomplish these bullet points here. Um, and we're going to go over this during our synchronous session. In the next video, we'll get into what is usability, and then we'll talk about accessibility and then wireframing.